as I'm doing the demo here, I'm realizing uh, there's a few problems. I've got to do these scarfs for these beams here, and they still have nails in them. And those nails are up in the deck, and I don't want to have to peel back fiberglass to, to get rid of them. Um, I could get like a cat's claw and really dig in there, and I'd probably do a ton of damage. So instead, what I need to do is run my belt sander to smooth that out. Um, but I don't have any power on board, so we're going to set up Renergy's 48 volt solar inverter charger here. And this is not the final uh, installation, but it's similar location. I am uh, going to put it somewhere in this area, but of course I need bulkheads and I need these beams all done first. So it's kind of like a chicken and egg situation. I need power to do my work, I need the work to be done to install the power properly. Uh, <laughs> I'm on a mooring ball right now. I can't afford to be at the dock and uh, I, all of my sweetheart deals are running out. All the favors I've called in are starting to run out. So I've got to just make it do work, make it work and do what I can. And luckily Renegy's 48 volt all in one box is all in one. So theoretically all I need to do is just wire it up and she's good to go. Also, a funny thing I didn't know about AC wiring, uh, these flat flat circuits you see here where all three wires are wired up flat like that, these are actually like $100 cheaper a spool. I don't know why, but the round ones, are they like higher rated? 105, 105, yeah, I don't know. They're rated the same, I don't get it. But these round ones are much more expensive than the flat ones. Obviously not this one, because it's a different gauge than this one, but if you're ordering the same gauge, quite a lot more expensive. I don't know why. If you do know why, sound off in the comments. Slow. I guess first time. All right, so, okay, now we just switched main on. Polarity's good. And then I just wired a galley outlet. Let's do that one. All right, let's test it. Do I have something to plug in? Yeah, we'll plug in this uh, big light. Hope for the best. Officially has AC power and it just charged the batteries. That's cool. Okay, we got a little bit of a problem. The operating voltage of uh, these panels is about 30 volts. The minimum voltage for the 48 volt Renogy is 60. Putting them in series only got me 63 volts, and as soon as the load gets on it, it drops a little bit. It's climbing. Anyway, it's uh, certainly not an optimal setup, I would say. Yeah, as soon as I start pulling actual amps out of this thing, four amps, five amps, it's dropping to 65, 66, okay, it's starting to come together. That's funny how it took a second. You know, you think with solar, it's just like instant salt state technology, it should just like bang on like that. But I guess the charge controller is trying to make the most of it. We're working now. It took a second and, and then the charge profile is kind of loaded up. And now it's pulling in just over 400 watts, which is amazing because the panels are not even supposed to be able to pull up 400 watts. So yeah, I'm very impressed with this setup. I mean, this is not how I want it to live forever, but I do need power on board, so I'll take it. Um, it's pretty slick to be able to uh, set it all up in, in a, basically in a morning. Um, it did help that I already did all this other wiring though, but you know, still pretty cool. All in one systems are the future, man. Like all of these parts separately would have been so expensive, but 
like having it all built into one box with a couple of good panels, like I just, that's so sick. So yeah, check out the link in the description. Thank you, Renegy, for sponsoring this episode. As always, um, you guys got my back. It's amazing. This is a really cool system. I just love how simple it is. All right, check what just came in. I made some custom shirts. Silver Bay watch. It's a bit of an inside joke with my friends because uh, every time there's a boat that breaks loose, we're running out to catch it. We're pulling people off of reefs. We're doing our own little kind of rescue situation out here. And uh, so I had some shirts made up for the crew. I just, I don't know. Hopefully, uh, hopefully Pamela Anderson's okay with me, uh, you know, blatantly copywriting that. <laughs> Hey. Oh, ho, ho, Silver Baywatch. <laughs> just takes his clothes off. Medium? Yeah, I don't know if you want a medium, but I'll, I'll here's a medium. It. You can try it. This is an extra large I'm wearing right now. That's an XL? That's what an XL. Fuck? So you're going to be, yes, You there's no, I don't know what world you think you fit into a medium. But like, sir, I know maybe the sizes were bigger in the 1950s and... It's good. It's good. All right, fine. It fits you. I, I need a, I need it's a gonna shrink up. a little bit, you know that, right? So am I. No, you're not. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> it looks good. It looks good. <laughs> Morning. We got a little treat, a little special treat, honey. Are you excited? Look at this. So Joel, who's helped us out a bunch on the boat already, is a lifetime plumber and actually has a solution for my sandy hose problem. What is it, Joel? So these fittings are more expensive, but they're made for the actual marine plumbing pipe mm -hmm. that you get at most channelers. Yeah. So they're not barbed quite as much, and they're much easier to put on and off. Is the diameter slightly different too, or just just um, the barbs aren't as pronounced? Yeah. So they're more money, right? Versus that, but they're and they take um, heat better. Okay. So yeah, they're just a better product. Awesome. More marine. Well, you know what? Like the, the amount of frustration I had, an extra couple bucks on some fittings would have really gone yeah, pretty nice. I was nice. watching your video and I was thinking, I, I offered my help that you declined. So. Oh, well, there anyway. you go. But, well, live and learn, right? It, plums, it works now. Yeah. And then good. I got to do, do them all over again when I go to haul out and replace every through hole that boat has. Yeah, I was going to do your, um, contact you too about your heat exchangers because they should have, sh there's a way to snug them up. Well, great, because I haven't done that yet, and they're yeah. sitting right on the bench right here. So, you know, while you're around, you can just sort this out. So these just have PTFE tape on them, and then I didn't know uh, I didn't know what pipe dope is. I've never used that, but I've always used PTFE tape. And what my goal now doing it in the shop was to, like, cap these and pressure test them before I install it again. Yeah, I've um, got some different kinds of Okay. Just a different Teflon. So okay, I so. used to always, like, when you did boilers and stuff, yeah, you'd run into that. And in the old days, you used to use hemp. Hemp, really? Yeah. And, like, you could get it at the wholesalers. Yeah, yeah. And then it would, over time, it would take up. Yeah. Actually, I had a boss, um, an old Dutchman that I apprenticed under, and he'd get his son to piss on those joints. <laughs> 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 and they would seal up. <laughs> All right. But seriously, well, if you use um, Teflon and then some pipe dope on there. All right, we'll get some pipe dope. Up. All right. Get some good stuff. Yeah. Pipe dope and different fittings, kids. That's what it was. This is the expert, so I'm just going to take it as gospel. Spools of wire have come in, so we're going to continue wiring all the AC circuits on the boat. Now, a fun thing about AC circuits, if you're using GFCI outlets, is that uh, every outlet you daisy chain afterwards is also part of that GFCI. So if that one pops, all the rest of them afterwards pop. It's relevant here because we only have six actual breakers for this whole boat, um, but that's only the 110 circuit, so I've... I'm okay with that, um, but it does mean that we're going to daisy chain a few outlets off of each of those six. So uh, they're going to feed a few, and I only really actually need a GFCI on the first one, but uh, subsequent ones after that, it's kind of like a 
a daisy chain game. As soon as one pops, everything afterwards pops. What'd you find, Lee? <laughs> look, look at this thing. Okay, we're, we're seeing all kinds of stuff in here. I mean, it's been generations, but... Uh, look at this, this is my favorite yet. Oh my God. Look at how that box, <laughs> it, <laughs> a little bit of spare wire, just screw it right in there, bud. Don't worry about it. Looks good. Oh my God. So yeah, that's an outlet. Yeah, you know, something like an outlet, anyway. So Lee's doing my wiring for the AC circuits and I'm just trying to keep ahead of him by like seconds now. Um, and just get, get all the old junk out and get a new junction box in there. So let's go. On, we're reusing as many of these stainless screws as we can. That's boat building on a budget, baby. Hey, you know, since we're on a budget, you want to uh, you want to reuse this bracket? Oh, yeah. yeah, it looks good, man. Sick. So what are these? Yeah, so we just we secure the cable so it can't move and then we put drip loops in. And so if any condensation in the compartment or on the cable naturally runs down and then drips off into the bilge. Yeah, so it would sit right at this low point and drip off from that and not go into exactly the receptacle. Right. Yeah, so it can't go into the receptacle. That's amazing. I never even never knew that. That's a yeah. new one for me. Pretty much pretty much anything we install we do that. Yeah, sick. And uh, do you want to talk about the boxes? Or is there anything special about those other than because I had like thought like, oh, I should make them completely waterproof, right? And then I like try and find hardware that would let me do that. And it was pretty challenging. Look, I mean, short of running conduit. It's always better. You know, yeah. If you can't make a waterproof, conformal coatings, corrosion protection inside the box, you know, whether that be, you know, um, some kind of spray or an actual conformal coating or electrolytic protection. Yeah. Um, but a box with a piece of electronics in it on a boat, going to corrode eventually no matter what mm -hmm. but um but yeah i mean this is a good middle ground we can we don't we can't normally seal it we can't completely seal it rather but you know at the end of the day um we're conformally coating the electronic modules um and then we're sealing the actual gpos as best we can general power outlets so it should last a very long time all right now's the time we got a circuit, another one in the cabinet, another one right there, and the one in the bathroom is not operational yet. All right, I'm gonna flip a switch. Uh, go ahead. All right. Before, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was on fire before, right? Okay, so you there you go. I just flipped the GFCI here. There we go. Now that one's on. The light. So yeah. The other outlets. Well, that's good. I don't really want a light in the middle of a living space like that. Oh, let's plug a USB device into it. Let me see. Charging. Hey. That is amazing. Nice. We have uh, AC nice. power on board now, and all thanks to Renergy System and Lee's help. Um, it was really easy to set that thing up. It's uh, so slick to have a brand new system with all new wiring. I don't have to trust any of the old stuff. It's all just brand new, clean, breakered, tinned, proper gauging. Everything is looking absolutely fantastic. If you're interested at all in looking at the batteries that I use, the solar panels I use, or that all-in-one system from Renogy, the links as always are in the description. Thank you so much to Renogy for sending that stuff out and letting me play with all of their cool gear. They actually have a new all-in-one box come out recently and uh, I really hope to see more of that because uh, those all-in-one systems are a great bang for your buck. Uh, 80 amp solar charge controller in that thing. 
80 amps and you can take 30 amps from shore power and charge your batteries with that and all of it at 48 volts with 3500 watts of pure sine wave energy like that is so impressive out of that little box for that little amount of money it is just such a good deal so as always links in the description thank you so much for energy for sponsoring this episode and we will see you guys next week Thank you.